I've heard they made some pretty interesting changes to the Empire mechanics, and with this new Legendary Lord, I'm actually kind of excited to see what they've got back in. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this footage? It was from the trailer Alpha's for the DLC. Mysterious, powerful, and a bit creepy. In this video, we'll be delving into Elspeth von Drac, deathly reclusive and the wielder of the dragon laser. To explore who she is, her mechanics, and new units you can expect to see as part of the Thrones of Decay DLC. <laughs> Her name echoes throughout the lands of the Empire. Oh, it's out there. A story shrouded in mystery. Yeah. Elspeth von Draken is, of course, our seemingly ageless personal protector of the Empire. <laughs> Not that anyone believes her, of course. Her starting location lies in the heart of Wissenland and Nuln. We're jumping into turn five of our Immortal Empires campaign, where the severed rags of our homelands have been delicately sewn back together to somewhat resemble their former glory. We've no immediate threats Someone, around us, okay. so we begin the delightful process of figuring out who to target next. I think I heard something about guilt getting moved all the way over to Cathay, so it kind of opens up this part of the map a little bit more. I believe this is in the southern part of the Empire. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that mountain range is a... Uh, uh, well, we've crossed that before, Zicket Claw. The big patch of undead land in the east probably needs turfing over, so we'll begin an expedition over to Sylvania. It helps that Elspeth receives no attrition from vampiric corruption, of course. And they Ooh. didn't see that coming. For Sigma nice. And Bolina. Okay, so then I suppose it's going to be just a face-off between her and obviously the Von Karsteins. I wonder how this is going to affect... Um, the actual AI and how those battles kind of turn out. Because usually uh, Vlad, he kind of just conquers pretty much everything in all the games that I played. Uh, it is a little bit RNG, so there might be some variation here and there, but usually he's doing pretty good for himself. Elspeth provides the fantasy of the kind of morally gray savior of the empire. Doesn't always do things the, the way that people might like, but she does get the job done. The way Elspeth mm. fits into the Empire roster is that she is a spellcaster character in the same way that Gelt is, but just uh, has a different lore of magic. She also rides a Carmine dragon, death, which yeah. is a monstrous mount, and not many spellcasters in the Empire roster actually field them. Imric would like to know your location. <laughs> a quick look around our neighborhood and we can see a few changes. For example, Helmgar now starts under the control of Karl Franz, giving him a little oh, more breathing room to try out his new elect account updates. Okay, I, I think that was kind of an issue with Carl Franz's campaign from what I heard, like, talking to you guys in chat and stuff. I think before the Successionists or whatever they were called, they were um kind of holed up there. And then when you move during Carl Franz's campaign, you kind of have to, like, choose to either go up north or try to take the fort. But the fort was also incredibly difficult to take because, you know, it's... It's the fort. But I think now, at least, it makes it a bit more clear as to, like, your campaign movement. And uh, getting your first province secured is a little bit easier for Carl. And down south, Gelt seems to be missing. He now starts oh, yeah. in Grand Cathay, fighting there alongside Zhao Ming, with new updates to his campaign also. We've covered these changes in our Thrones of Decay blog posts, which you can find in the links below. Gotcha. For now, back to Elspeth. Wait, if he starts all the way over there with Zhao Ming, um, where would he start? I think maybe that's near where, like, the Burning Wind faction starts. Uh, kind of near Nakai the Wanderer, right? We've been utilizing the Imperial Gunnery in the Imperial Gunnery School Ooh. window, and by applying our schematics... Wait, okay. Give me a second. I kind of want to go back and look at that. Hmm, okay, interesting. So, basically, we use this currency, of, which is schematics that they just mentioned there and uh you can max out a particular unit to make them super powerful uh, i suppose this kind of goes with like what you want to build in your armies and you would probably want to optimize this uh depending on your play style i guess we'll also have to see like how abundant these schematics are is it possible to like max out basically everything at some point or is it 
a limited number of upgrades. We also have this Amethyst Armory over on the top right here. I uh, don't know what that's about. Gunnery in the Imperial Gunnery School window. And by applying our schematics we've collected after battles, we've been able to upgrade our units. There is a nice selection of upgrades across the munition units. I mean, if you get them after battle, then yeah, I feel like it's basically just an infinite amount. But we're currently focusing on our artillery, because who doesn't have explosions? Yeah. So far in tier one, we've added in additional projectiles cool to our Hellstorm rocket battery, and my personal favorite, improve the reaction time of the Hellblaster volley guns by removing the cannot run attribute, increasing their speed, and improving acceleration and deceleration through the Wayfarer ability. Not bad for a single upgrade. These are just our early upgrades as well, and as we utilize the gunnery school, we increase our tier. Unlock. Oh, okay. So while it looks kind of different. This is basically the same thing as Ike Claw's laboratory, right? Works the same way with the level ups and you probably have to get to certain conditions in order for your, your thing to level up. And then you can unlock the better upgrades for particular units. Not gonna lie, just with this, uh, I feel like the Empire is uh, looking pretty good. Looking further, more powerful upgrades and access to new units. With Elspeth being in charge of Whistling Under Null, we knew that we had to have the Imperial Gunnery School in there. The mechanic kind of writes itself, an experimental weapon school in the core to the Empire. It adds to the player experience by allowing you to push the limits of what your gun units could normally do. And it gets spicy at the end. For Sigma and Verena. At this stage, mm. our army is primarily made up of foot soldiers. Our Null Ironsides are the front line of our force. And with more advanced arm oh a tier four missile infantry thing with the empire from my understanding is that it's kind of advertised as being an all-rounder faction but it's really not it's all in the missile infantry because uh your melee infantry doesn't really beat out anybody else's armor melee capabilities and missile strength and our standard empire gunners will bring them right in to weaken the enemy's front line before bringing back in our swordsmen to take on the bulk of the melee we're in the midst of taking the walls. We'll position our ranged units on top of them to take advantage of the height. And I think we'll target mm. our artillery on this section to make things a little less bottlenecky. <laughs> All those units are dead. <laughs> okay, well, that's an interesting tactic. I didn't know that you could use your artillery to destroy walls. I, I always thought that it was just a unique thing for the Skaven with their... Um, uh, I forget the exact name of the unit. You guys know what I'm talking about. The guys who run over and destroy the wall with their little chisels or whatever. <laughs> Warp zone grinders. There it is. Popped right into my head. With enough artillery fire, honestly, trying to defend against the Empire could be really scary. Like, you probably wouldn't want to be on the walls because of the artillery, and they'll just get through the walls with the artillery. Vlad has joined the fray, and call me over the top, but while he's caught up, I'm just going to target all my artillery on him. <laughs> Poor Vlad. And let's mop up the stragglers using our Hockland Long Rifles. The Hockland Long Rifles is kind of like fat. 260 range. I mean, yeah, it is a rifle, all right. A lot less armored than the previous unit. So this is kind of like your Warp Lock Gisales, I guess. Just a bit more mobile. I don't remember the range of the Warp Lock Gisales. I think uh, they probably have better range than these guys. But obviously there's like trade-offs and stuff, so we'll see how this goes. And favorite weapon from the tabletop. They're long range, they're armor piercing, and they can really strike targets from a distance. Both the Ironsides and the Hockland Long Rifle sit either side of the handgunners in terms of where they sit on the roster. It's really you take mm. what tool you need for the job to get the job done. Okay. It's turn 20. Our armies are bespoke and our power is unquestioned. But our mantelpiece is empty and could do with some trinkets. The Dark Lady of Nuln is a bit of an antiques collector. Magical arcane artifacts entrance her as she yearns to understand the lore of death in its entirety. In her quest to complete her collection of artifacts though, she needs a quick way to travel. Gardens of Moor can be built in any friendly or neutral Empire-owned settlement, allowing us to create a network of pathways for Elspeth to transverse. We've set up a black tower near our capital of Nuln, Wait. so within a couple of turns, we can return to and assist our most important settlements without fear of traveling too far. 
Gardens oh. can be used to construct unique buildings to provide extra settlement garrisons, unlock units, and boost your abilities in campaign and battle. Okay, uh, that's pretty cool. Just the ability to teleport back, like, even if it's not immediate, uh, that's still very useful, especially if you need to, to teleport back to defend your territory. Be sure to keep in mind the cooldown after constructing each garden. It's important to plan your pathways carefully. We introduced the Gardens of Moor mechanic to really tap into the more of Elspeth, of this uh, mysterious woman that goes between Black Towers and her relationship with the Cult of Moor. From a gameplay side, it really helped her to zip around the Empire and protect them in dire straits. Bring Rather than rely on these gardens too much, let's make sure our homeland is well defended by utilizing our Master Engineer Lord. Compelled by good sense. Turtu, what are you so doing? Hayley from the Engineers Guild, the engineers are kind of these master craftsmen who specialize in creating all the weird and wonderful weapons that the Empire used to dispatch of their enemies during battles. The Rest difference between the engineer Earthy. and the master engineer is the engineer is a hero and wields a repeater rifle, and he can use the ability Mercurial Shot from the Tamarkan book. Ooh. The master engineer wields a grenade launching blunderbuss, and both units can also call down the fearsome pigeon bombardment. The pigeon bombardment? Cuckoo, Are you kidding me? The engineers, <laughs> I believe. Alongside them, we have a new what legendary is that? hero, Theodore Bruckner. <laughs> Was that like a makeshift unicorn with electricity coming out of his horn? Known as the Titan Headsman is this kind of champion of Null, the Justicar who kind of fights enemy characters. He is also the only character that is mounted on a demogriff. Hmm. Yeah, we saw this guy in the cinematic trailer too. It's turn 40. Elspeth has vanquished Festus and his Fecundite faction. But our neighbors of Null grow irritable of our conquests. Trying The war groves of woe have turned our forests against us. It may be because we discovered the Nemesis Crown. Okay, what is this? Nemesis Crown. Uh, wait a minute. I've never gotten it before in one of my campaigns. I've only seen, like, Cleeper or Reggie do it. And it's basically a different sort of cane. I wonder where this would be located. I mean, it, it's nice that, it, you know, there's not just only the sort of cane. Now we gotta... Something new on the table. And we also have the ability to just seal it away for a few turns, uh, which gives us uh, some money. But I mean, if you're going for total war, then why not just take Brown, it? Brown, and after taking it for ourselves, gain diplomatic penalties for all factions nationwide. Whoops. Elspeth can't help herself. Much to Elspeth's joy, the Nemesis Crown is a free Corrupting update from Crown. 5.0. Within our Imperial Gunnery School, though, we've reached Tier 3, nice. unlocking the Amethyst panel. We can now purchase, tier three, recruit, okay. and upgrade Amethyst units, taking advantage of their magically augmented munitions. Amethyst artillery is also available to us now, turning the tide on Dreitcher's invasion. Better get collecting those schematics. It will rain death. I see. The Amethyst Armory bring that combined focus of guns and magic, which you don't normally see within the Empire. And they are very yeah, potent, especially cool. with all the combined bonuses you can get for the Amethyst units and the regular counterparts. Whoa! Some of the what later the additions include dropping a giant purple sun. Dang! The Nemesis Crown sits heavy upon That's Elspeth. That's pretty cool, yeah. As we dominate, we make more and more enemies with our neighbors, but the temptation for Elspeth is too much. So while we have the option to drop it off at the nearest thrift store, I think we'll keep it. I protect the <laughs> Empire. We're winning the war. I mean, I think it would be pretty fun to just go all out with the Nemesis Crown. The upkeep could be a problem, but as long as you're winning and getting enough territories and your economy is just bawling, like, you should be fine. But Dreiter has made a bold move for her swan song, stepping forth into our lands to attack our capital of Nome. We can't travel to a besieged settlement using the Gardens of Moor, but Grunberg? That ain't too far away. Ah, cool. I see. Right, I can't handle an army of 40 units, so Elspeth's backup is going to come in as and when she's needed. Our garrison can hold off the first wave of wood elves, but looks like Dreitcher's on her way with her main army. Mm -hmm. We're 
We're probably about to see it, right? The Elspeth laser. arrives atop her Carmine dragon. Let's boost that morale. Don't take this. Devastating. As we lose units of our garrison, it frees up space for more of Elspeth's more qualified soldiers to arrive as backup. Oh, wait, those are my cannons. Oh, well. <laughs> my Knights of the Black Rose will avenge them. The Knights of the Black Rose are this sword and board cavalry that really excel in sustained engagements. Certainly not the speediest cav out there, but boy oh boy are they tough. I don't know anything about the numbers, but this seems pretty good. Oh dear, they're really making their way in. Plus, they found some of my undefended gates. Time to call in the artillery. The steam tank is that now Carl Franz plastered on top. <laughs> is this twist on a really beloved existing unit? A steam tank volley gun. I mean, steam tanks have already been in the game, and I don't really know how this compares to them. But uh, I mean, it looks cool. <laughs> There's our hero. Ah, here comes our navy. Hang on, there's no sea here. And we don't have a navy. And finally, we have the Marion but now class we do. land ship, which is this ridiculous boat on wheels within it. I think from what you guys said in the comments, it's basically Marienburg trying to create their own steam tank, but they couldn't really figure it out and like fit it in a, as compact of a shape. So they were just like, screw it. We're just going to put it in a ship. And that's how that came about, right? That was probably a horribly inadequate explanation as to how that came about, but that's my understanding of it. Extreme amount of firepower. Theodore, mate, I know you're on your last legs, but I need you back in the fight. Okay, okay, he's going down. But his Veil <laughs> Flame Amulet has... A Wait a minute. Enabled if unit is dead, so it's like a last hurrah? If you maybe almost fought them to the death, they're barely on a sliver of health, and this is just going to finish them off? Other ideas. And there it is. Bruh. Final push, in we go. Nope. Oh, okay then. Elspeth, it's up to you. <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that the artillery shoots like little mini what do they call it? Black Suns. I don't know how powerful that spell is, but like this could ha it has the potential to do massive amounts of damage and especially considering that it's magic it goes through all the physical defense and armor it would probably be super effective against demons too because i i think demons just have like a higher physical resistance usually the empire flourishes We've confederated some of our allies into our faction, increasing our new imperial authority. And we've created a vast network of gardens across the rest. Completing tier 5 of the Gunnaroo School means we've unlocked the Amethyst Landship and the Purple Eclipse. Both Purple will be powerful Eclipse. additions to our armies once we find a new target to use them on. On the horizon, we'll see a this. new threat in the form of Tamakan. And perhaps yet, we'll find an ally in the Dwarves. Should probably drop off the crown if we want to make friends. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments on the new additions. And don't forget to follow our links to find out more, including the extra campaign reworks we've added for Empire, Nurgle, and Dwarves as part of Patch 5.0. Check out our I scene page to which list it now. That's fine. They want to save some things, you know, for us to discover for ourselves. I mean, the Empire has been in the game since the very first Total War Warhammer game, so... Uh, I've always felt like 
they probably needed an update. Not to say that like any of the mechanics they had before was, um, you know, just bad or generic. I haven't played them pre this update, so I, I don't know that experience. But with this, it certainly makes things a lot more interesting and kind of brings them back up to date with some of the newer stuff that got released. And I can already see Empire players being super excited to try out some of the new technology. Uh, you know, just more strategic choices to make. It's always good in a grand strategy game. But yeah, if there's any interesting facts or lore bits that I should know or might have missed out on, please let me know in the comments. I do read through all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.